Hey, what's up guys, Aaron for here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 9 today in Season 1 for the Hungarian Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A British Grand Prix home race that actually went somewhat well, so maybe the curse is broken. And once again, doing a bit of a gamble on the strategy, doing what we need to do to get ourselves in a position that we shouldn't really be in, and we're able to secure some more points at Silverstone. And I'm I'm hoping to continue this trend basically because we're doing this lately uh, and kind of forming a pattern and if we keep this up we very much can and will eventually catch Alpine uh, the first team in the standings and then look on further than that maybe to Alpha Tauri and as we go on through the season the car has been improving as well so that's one other thing and the team acclaim has been improving and we did get acclaim level 10 then in the last episode so we can gain a second extra sponsor slot on the car not just for the car livery but but also, obviously, some actual cash coming in weekly, and then also the gold bonus as well. So, having a look at kind of all the kind of uh, possibilities, in the end of it, I'm going to choose PSD here. Uh, very, very weird, quirky logo, but to be fair, ironically, it's called PSD uh, in, from Season 2. I'll be using a PSD to overwrite and make my own mod more delivery. But for now, PSD with a uh, pretty high weekly income and very high goal bonus to match. And the weekly goal is simply to answer four interview questions during a race weekend, which, well and truly, if I just answer every question I'm given in qualifying and then in the race, we should get that. Obviously, if there's ones where I would rather say no comment, I may have to just bite the bullet and just answer it, even if it maybe, you know, goes down in terms of our acclaim level for a little bit, because I, I don't think the, the questions uh, affect acclaim that much, to be fair, and it's going to be worth the money, because that's quite a lot. 264k, that's the second highest goal bonus there was there, and that's on top of having the weekly acclaim be pretty high as well but also at the same time it means we get a third sponsor in the mix that we can change around on the car not very nicely this logo is a kind of you know vertically very long so it kind of looked a lot better on the no structure I felt versus the other ones we had and then just nice to kind of you know fill the car out basically and kind of have it actually look like a bit more like a normal car you know it, like from real life one with different sponsors everywhere not just the same one not just echo splattered all along it basically so yeah so good addition to the team and welcome one and and hopefully that's going to help us trying to reduce this bottleneck that we've had. Because we've spoken about this before. There's been a big bottleneck because we don't effectively have the HQ facilities to account for the R&D points we have. So we want to try and get spending on the HQ facilities to unlock some of that. Not quite yet though for the chassis and aero. Even though that would be the next logical step. I do feel like we do need to have some sort of investment on the engine side. Because we have not touched the HQ for the engine department whatsoever. Uh, in nine episodes in, which is pretty mad. And I think now maybe our engine is starting to fall behind a little bit. We've got the injection system upgrade, which is going to come in this episode. That was the free engine power upgrade. You guys uh, let let me know that I should I should have get, definitely got. But you can see we're on spec level zero on the powertrain. So that's a little bit poor. We should probably bring that at least to spec one, basically. So I was pretty tempted with the resource point generation because at the moment, obviously, with our custom settings, our resource uh, R&D is very reduced at a very reduced rate but in the end thought mm, no you know what let's go for the build time because I'm, if we want to rapidly scale up the car we need things like the reduction of the speed of the upgrades that are coming in we can do the resource generation maybe at a point at the end of the season so gonna go for that maybe later down the line for now we'll go to the build time on the engine side of things and we're now we're gonna look ahead to what upgrades we've got coming in then so as I said we've got the injection system that came in we've also got that front downforce minor upgrade that's gonna come in to help balance out the car because we obviously had the rear downforce upgrade two episodes ago uh, that we purchased and then we only purchased this front one uh, last episode so we had that kind of imbalance between the rear one coming in and then the front one that finally now balances out and then we've also got the drag reduction that's going to come in in two days time on the activity timeline so plenty of improvements coming on the aero side but still plenty to go it's very very apparent in especially a race like Silverstone that we were lacking a bit of downforce but I'm going to go ahead and take advantage at the moment with over two thousand R&D points but a 63% discount on the weight redistribution we're gonna go ahead and buy that because that's a massive reduction in cost uh, engine side we've got to go for another engine power upgrade if we want to unlock any of the other things that come with the engine the, I assume like the ERS basically and the fuel management there and how good that is we have to delve into a little bit deeper into the engine power the minor 500 R&D one uh, that's gonna come in for the Belgium Grand Prix so in between this summer break essentially the, uh, the season break in 
the middle. Um, but that's kind of just how, how it is. We'll have to wait that long for it. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, the turbo upgrade we did failed. So, you know, the durability, investing in it, you know, really coming back in a good way. Really nice karma there of it failing. So we have to spend another 100 to redo it and re-get it, essentially. But it happens sometimes. So we just have to move on and push on through it. And so as we go through the activity timeline, we've got a lot of activities to get through. And a few upgrades are going to come in. And one of them is going to be the chassis. And it's going to be the weight redistribution, the first upgrade we bought last episode. And that will open up the slot for us to do another simultaneous upgrade of the heave damper. And that's going to be for the tire wear. So that's going to be useful. I did mention before that I thought tire wear levels were okay. But you can never, obviously, you know, it's always maybe good to get those upgrades done. Because we're going to have to do them eventually. We have enough R&D to spend on some more upgrades there on the drag reduction. That's going to be 600. No discount, unfortunately, but as I said, we have the R&D for it. So we've actually got quite a few upgrades pending then for not just the next episode, but kind of well, it were into the next episode because we've got the summer break. But it would have been a cut next couple of weeks, basically. But because you've got that massive summer break in between Hungary and the Belgium Grand Prix, all of these upgrades, I think, should come in time for next episode, barring anything failing, basically. But probably inevitably there will, will be probably one upgrade that does fail. But if they all come in, that's a very, very decent chunk of, you know, speed we're going to find, I think, versus Alfa Romeo, Haas, and especially more crucially, chasing off the likes of Alpine and Alfa Tauri on the R&D chart. Going on then into the race weekend and getting through the quick practice, I uh, had a few little niggles at the start in FP1 with a couple of failures on the uh, programs we were doing, but eventually got a nice little run of good luck to get all the programs done eventually in the time, and so that's going to be some more boosting, a lot of them on the durability side, and then the aero as well, so, you know, I think we if we wait long enough where we keep doing practice sessions honestly we might actually have so many upgrades or discounts rather waiting for us on the durability part because you know obviously I'm not that keen on buying that many of them obviously at this early stage obviously a stage of this of the of the career mode where you know calm if our car breaks down a few times here and there it's on the end of the world we're not in a championship fight so I'd rather spend my R&D elsewhere but that means when we get to durability those boosters will all have applied and the discounts could be quite large so you know it could be quite uh, a nice surprise once we get to those but we now go into the business portion of the first part of the race weekend on Saturday then into Q1 and I don't know how this is going to go you know because it is you know they say Monaco are the barriers but unlike Monaco the, the car really does kind of matter a bit more than it does at Monaco. Monaco you can outdrive a bad car and maybe drag it up. Hungary I don't feel like you can do that as much. It is a bit car limited a bit more, way more so than Monaco really and like Silverstone where we were lacking downforce so I just think we're going to be lacking some of that around here basically because it's such a uh, you know a technical circuit we need to get the nose turned in acceleration needs to be quick change of direction as well which is something that the car is is okay at we've been improving with a lighter car it makes that easier but it's still I can definitely notice uh, definitely a harder car to kind of swing left to right than versus some of our rivals in the AI but we'll see how it goes in the second run a lot better than the first lap the first lap was pretty much a banker the second lap though nearly 1.2 seconds gain is we're trying to get on the power as early as we dare. 1.15 seconds then gained and we're up into P16 and I was very happy about that. I thought that may just put us through into Q2 but to my dismay by the end of the session some people got some laps in right at the end. Some people being the Alfa Romeos I think. Both of them in fact got some quick laps in right at the death and just slipped us out of the, uh, out of the uh, Q2 entry point and into the drop zone along with Mick Schumacher there being knocked out in P17. I lot really poor from him. 21st place there. Don't know what's happened there um, but you know, not a massive gap to be from myself to him, kind of usual as we've seen in the previous episodes, but yeah, really, really annoying because I thought we were going to make it, but I got a bit too overconfident maybe and could have done a third run to try and secure our place in Q2, but it's not the end of the world because I feel like we wouldn't have progressed any further than P16 to 15 in Q2, so let's go to the grid. I'm curious to see what the strategy may be like around Hungary. Uh, you know, last year's game, there were some differing strategies that could play into the hands of the midfield, us, um, so hopefully it could be the same for us again this year. Welcome to Budapest once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. Historically a good race for first victories with Button, Hill, Alonso and Heike Kovalainen 
all reaching the top step of the podium for the first time here. 14 corners then for our drivers to navigate at the 2.7 mile Hungaro ring today. It's six lefts and eight rights around a lap here with average speeds in the region of 120 miles per hour. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Now, I want to talk to you about Carlos Sainz. Looks like they've got a tough race in store today as grid penalties from changing power unit components has forced them further down the field. Everyone has to deal with penalties or reliability issues from time to time throughout their career. You just have to suck up the pain and get on with the job at hand. Today isn't about performing a miracle to put the car back where it should be. It's about effective damage limitation. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Sergio Perez and Ricardo, Norris, Vettel, Stroll and Pierre Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Kimi Raikkonen and Ocon, Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, Carlos Sainz, the owner driver, Mazepin, Russell, Eilert and Nicholas Latifi. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Right, so on to another race day where we're hoping to try and jump this car up the order. But uh, unless we get another safety car and we get very lucky in that regard, I don't know what, what it's going to be like, what the vibe is. Because we've got two different strategies. We've got a one-stop here and a two-stop down the bottom. Now, I, I assume the top ten will be on that strategy at the bottom. So there will be a chance to get trap position. But this is a medium to hard tyre strategy. So I don't know how that hard tyre is going to go. And in terms of our pace, you know, there's no race this time around to also help us out with a bit of a gamble and strategy, anything like that. So it's kind of a bog standard, just hoping that we can keep track position with the one less stop versus others um, and just see how we go, really. But it's going to be a bit more of a pure assessment then, I guess, of where the car is, really. But the car's definitely taken a step forward this weekend with the engine upgrade and also the aero as well that we've added onto it. And myself as well, getting more and more comfortable with this game. So here we go, then. It's so a five red lights for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Lights are out and we're underway from P18 on the green. We've got a Ferrari for company as a uh, Sainz with an engine penalty, I assume, on the left-hand side, making the jump on the two Alfa Romeos. We got very close to Giovinazzi on the left-hand side. Dived down the inside of Raikkonen. Three wide with the Alpine of Ocon and Sainz on the outside. The Ferrari on soft. Both myself and Ocon on the medium compound. We get squeezed out by the Alpine. Boxed in a bit. Watching Sainz overtake Ocon, squeezing him out. And we can't really do too much. We're going to have to settle in for P15 and then see what we can do from here. But we with the added engine, you know, upgrade, I think we, we should be pretty good on the straights. In terms of downforce levels, we've gone, I think, 8-8 eight, eight wings, which is the bog standard default wings that you get given for Hungary. And uh, But with the upgrade, we already did have an advantage on Alpine in a straight line. The Alpine team, not great in a straight line, but with the added upgrade, look at the speed we're gaining with even without DRS. And we're going to make a big lunge to the inside there. Very, very close on the left-hand side, but no contact made with Ocon, keeping it very clean indeed. We're going to squeeze him to the inside to try and tighten up his line then take the racing line a bit wider and then swing around the outside to finish off the move into P13 pretty damn decent but at the moment Valtteri Bottas then leads a 1-2 for McLaren Perez in third and Ricardo once again doing a great job for McLaren in this career mode of ours very much uh, the opposite of real life doing a stonking job for McLaren here that improved McLaren that race winning McLaren this season but back to our POV then lap number six we've settled down and now we're trying to get the jump on Yuki Tsunoda with DRS and ERS to aid us. It's another lunge to the inside. It's deja vu almost as on the exit again, just like with Ocon, we're battling and we're going to squeeze him to the inside and guess what? Take the wider line, keep it around the outside and get the move. So definitely our favourite move to do uh, so far on this game around Hungary. You know, two moves done very successfully. Very, very neat and tidy. No issues really. And now we've got, well, Sainz is in. He was one man on the soft compound entire along with Ricardo then. Uh, the others looking to stretch their stint a little bit more, but lap number seven, they're already coming in for the soft. So if any of those other guys are coming in now, those are going to be the guys we're looking to try and jump then on this one stop. But to be fair, you can see on the top left there, there are quite a few of those guys coming into the pit lane. They want to hard compound a tyre. So are they trying to do a one stop themselves from softs to hard? So unlike F1 2020, on this new game, 
maybe the AI are being a bit clever and some of the guys at the top that have got the speed and the ability, they may be also doing the one stop, they're just doing a, an orthodox one, starting on softs and going on to hards, whereas us midfield guys, we, you know, we're going to mediums, maybe our tire wear levels are not as good as those top teams yet, and so, you know, we can't exactly match that sort of strategy, that one stop on soft and hard. And speaking of the top teams here, you can see Bottas get, making mince meat of me, basically, on the inside there, the last corner, not wanting to give up too much time, to be fair, so I didn't put up much of a fight, uh, but the understeer was kind of kicking in, and for me already, I'm already feeling the tire wear now on these mediums, lap 11, I feel like we're going till, I think, lap 15 or 16 is the pit stop window, I feel like it actually may be worth pitting in a little bit earlier, and trying to get an undercut on Alonso, because I, I feel like I'm losing that much time now on these warm mediums, but at the moment, I'm hoping that Bottas, going for a move on Alonso could slow him up enough that we can just catch Alonso napping maybe I know difficult to do it is Fernando Alonso but if we can maybe try and get a jump on him whilst Bottas kind of slows him down that'd be good we can't quite get it done just yet and Hamilton now is going to look to overtake me in a very unorthodox place we go wide on the curb and the car gets unsettled Hamilton just slings one through down the inside and he's up into P4 but you know we're still running pretty damn high here of course we, we've got to make one stop but a few people behind us We'll also have to make another stop in this race. So those are the people that we're hoping we can stay ahead of. But it looks like Mercedes are going on for a very dominant 1-2 potentially with a one-stop off soft compound of tyres. So fair play, fair play. But it's, you know, to be fair, it's good. It's good to see that the AI on this year's game, there's a bit of difference, there's a bit of actual, you know, reactiveness to the situation. I feel like, on, well, it was very much the case on last year's game. Any time the top 10 were on the softs and there was that difference in the one to two stop, they always just did that two stop and you could always take advantage of it and there'd be that kind of difference of... Uh, that concrete difference that you're going to see. But this year, I'm noticing already in a couple of races we've had so far, some of the top teams, they're actually going to the one-stop despite being on the softest compound, and they're just making it work, basically, which makes our lives harder, obviously, as a midfield team, a lower-down team, trying to, you know, abuse that one-stop and trying to to, to get it to, to uh, catapult us up the grid. But, you know, it is what it is, and it makes for clever AI, of course. So yeah, I'm all for it at the end of the day, to be fair, but it does make our lives harder. But what is going to make life harder for two individuals is, the, uh, well, Mick Schumacher and Callum Eilert, our teammate here, they're uh, both ahead of both Ferraris. Now, Carlos Sainz, obviously, he had an engine penalty, so fair enough, he was down the order, but I don't know what's happened to Leclerc. I, I, I absolutely don't know why he's down there, but both Ferraris are behind us and are behind Schumacher. They were behind Eilert, but he's come in now for his pit stop. But uh, both Ferraris getting held up in absolute treat by Schumacher, so much so that uh, I think we're in good shape to maybe stay ahead of them, you know. So that's going to be two positions we gain on top of maybe the other ones we're going to be gaining uh, later in this race once we find out who is going to actually make that second stop and come out behind us. Well, lap 17, the most crucial thing is to be looking on the right-hand side, and there is Fernando Alonso, and there we go ahead of him. We go aggressive to the inside to cover him off and give him no chance to get through on the inside, but we've done it. The undercut has worked. We went about three laps earlier onto hard compound tyres, despite being a harder compound. That's how much tyre wear there was around here on the mediums for all of us, really, but very much for me, I improved my lap times on the hards, and we've done enough to jump Fernando Alonso, so once again, going to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the double world champion, and you know, all this is great experience, because he's obviously a great AI in the game, very quick, very consistent, and he gives you no room to breathe, and so this is all, you know, good practice, basically, battling AI at the top level, basically, once we get into a, you know, a position where we're battling for the top spots, because, you know, Fernando, even being in a, in a midfield car, is of that kind of calibre he's going to give us that kind of good fight and uh, you know now the pressure is going to be on for the rest of the race lap 18 we've got a long way to go in this one uh, but we are going all the way now to the end on this set of ties but like I said Fernando gives you no room to breathe and we're a bit slow into last sector and look at the dive bomb Alonso's done we give him a tiny bit of room and he keeps his nose in there and he goes for it and he sends it into the last corner we're understeering I've not taken the best racing line I will admit through that entire last corner all race long but we're now squeezing Alonso towards the pit lane doing a Schumacher almost a Michael Schumacher round the outside we go then and trying to find the grip can we find 
the acceleration to do it. No, not quite tucking behind, though. Despite Alonso having DRS, we uh, de uh, deploy all our ERS down that straight. So into the left-hander, down the hill. We're still side by side. Get the elbow out and we're up back into P8 in this race. And that's the position we're fighting for, I think, in this race. P8 is what we're going for because everyone else ahead of us, they're not making another pit stop. They're going to the end on hard tires as well. But Alonso continuing to apply the pressure and we're a little bit slow off turn one on lap number 25. Ten laps to go and he's still giving us such a good fight. The P8, we're just about hanging on. We give him a squeeze and it's very close on the rear end. But Alonso gets squeezed out again. But this time, look at Yuki Tsunoda go round the outside in the Alpha Tauri. Great little dive and he keeps it committed because he goes through to the inside and it's going to be side by side all the way up the hill. Bit of a wobble as both drivers try and find some grip on the on the right foot in the rear end of their cars. And Alonso gets his nose in past the chicane and they're still at it. Side by side for pretty much now a whole sector or two sectors because Sonoda keeps his foot in, Alonso keeps his foot in and Alonso is just about trying to go around the outside is still alongside the Alpha Tauri somehow. This might be one of the best scraps I've ever seen from any AI on any F1 game. This is absolutely extraordinary. I don't know how these guys have kept it side by side for now pretty much nearly a whole lap around the Hungaroring. I mean, look at Yuki go back down the inside. Alonso gets the, the better line though and gets the acceleration. But Yuki, he's got the Honda engine in the back of that car. DRS as well on Alonso on the inside and Alonso has to tuck in eventually and Sonoda will get up into P9 but my word that is definitely the best AI battle we've seen so far on this game and uh, please I want some more of that that was absolutely awesome I'm all for that all for watching that back on the replay cameras and capturing that kind of stuff for you guys in these videos but here we go defensive on Sonoda it's lap 35 it's been a pretty quiet last 10 laps in terms of Sonoda's just been slowly catching up to us and then right here at the end of this race with the tyre wear kicking in Sonoda just fancying his chances. I've noticed the AI compared to previous games, they definitely do feel a bit more aggressive at the end of the race. Like, they won't just give you an easy time. They'll, you know, really press you every single lap, and especially now with the tyre wear, because it gets bad at the end of the stints, so you have to be quite careful because they will try and pounce on you when the tyre wear starts to grind on you as a player. But we're going to hold this through and come through for once again some very, very solid points. Eighth place here. One stop. Work to treat the two Ferraris came behind us so big ups Mick Schumacher and Callum Eilert for holding those two guys down we got the driver of the day it's another really decent day in the office cannot complain there'll be smiles back at the factory after that one a great race and a real team performance to take victory here in Hungary Anthony Davidson how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today well time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one as ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. And what do you know, Valtteri Bottas gets the win and Hungary actually held on to that race lead he had versus Lewis Hamilton. And third place, Sergio Perez, once again, outshining Verstappen for another time in uh, this 2021 season. Season one of our career mode then, of course, remember, not entirely accurate to real life. I, th I believe there might actually be probably a patch soon for performance levels because I think definitely the Red Bull needs a bump in general, uh, not just uh, individual in terms of the car itself. But um, yeah, in terms of us, P8... You know, four points on the board, beating Alonso, who we've been fought, we pretty much has been our main rival for the last few episodes, basically. And we were ahead of two Ferraris, so I really can't complain. And we're on 17 points, all 17 I've earned, so it'd be great if Ilot could actually maybe do something this season. But obviously, we know from last year's game that it's very much impossible for the uh, AI teammate to do anything in Season 1 when the car is that poor and you've got no personnel upgrades on him. Uh, it might be something to look into, but also at this early stage, you want to maybe develop 
more of the car than the teammate and kind of save that for season two once you start to actually get to a point where you're properly in the midfield fight. But uh, us individually, 17 points on the board, 17 points for the team. We are slowly, slowly catching up to Alpine. We may not be able to get Alpha Tower anymore because they've actually gone on to overtake Aston Martin. And maybe what I said earlier, two episodes ago, about maybe going for P5 is still not off the cards. Maybe that was wishful thinking, but definitely we can try and get Alpine, which would be a massive, massive thing because they are an established midfield team. We are not. And so that would be a massive win for us, basically. But if you guys did enjoy another, another decent, solid showing for the Arrow Outer Racing team here in this episode, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.